Hi, in this video we are going to quickly see some important exam oriented points regarding anticoagulants. So this has been asked previously in university exams like uh, explain the anticoagulants that are, why anti physiological basis of using anticoagulants in myocardial infarction, what is the mechanism of action of heparin as an anticoagulant and uh, why is dicumerol or mechanism of action of dicumerol as an anticoagulant. So we can uh, see how we can approach a question like this. So first of all, when a short essay question is asked, we should need we need an introduction. So in this case, we can tell about the basic classification of anticoagulants. So we know anticoagulants are basically used to prevent clotting of blood. So uh, it can be divided into two types. One is endogenous, which means which are produced inside the body. And three well-known examples of endogenous anticoagulants are heparin, antithrombin 3 as well as protein C. Okay, so this we had discussed earlier, so I'm not repeating that. Now in this video, we'll be concentrating more on the exogenous anticoagulants, that is those which use we use to prevent clotting outside the body. Okay, so what are exogenous? Which is, which exogenous means it's produced from other sources. It is not produced inside the body. Okay, so we'll see what these exogenous anticoagulants are. So exogenous anticoagulants, they basically prevent blood from clotting and it is uh, usually used for collection of blood sample for laboratory investigations, for, for preserving blood for transfusion as well as for anticoagulation therapy. Okay. So now we will see some important anticoagulants that are used for co both collection of blood sample as well as for preserving blood for blood transfusion. First and the most important one is EDTA and the mechanism of action is it chelates the blood calcium. So we know calcium is very important for clotting. So when the calcium is chelated, there, is, there are no more calcium ions that are present and thus clotting is prevented. So EDTA is an important anticoagulant which is used for collection of blood sample. Then we have sodium citrate again which prevents coagulation by inactivating calcium ions. And then we have got double oxalate and here also the basic mechanism is calcium is not available for clotting. But in this case what double oxalate does is it combines with calcium and forms an insoluble complex. Okay, so here again uh, calcium will not be available for clotting. And then we've got sodium fluoride, the mechanism of which is a slightly different. It is an inhibitor of glycolytic enzymes, so which uh, in turn causes a decrease in glucose and thereby there will be prevention of clotting. And then we have again oxalates which form insoluble complexes with calcium. And finally we've got heparin which facilitates the action of antithrombin 3. So we see heparin is actually an example for endogenous anticoagulant also. That is heparin can be produced inside the body but can also be, be used synthetically or produced synthetically. And the mechanism of action is the same. Right. So these are the important anticoagulants that are used for collection of blood sample as well as preserving blood. Now we said the next indication for anticoagulants are for anticoagulation therapy. Now this part is very important. See why do we need to give anticoagulants to patient is basically to treat or prevent thrombosis. Okay, we don't want abnormal clot formation inside our body. So what are the indications of anticoagulant therapy? First one is for those patients who, are, who have attacks of cerebral ischemia. See them, it might be a small uh, thrombus or a small, uh, you know, a small vasospasm of the cerebral arteries which is producing the cerebral ischemia. But in either case, we give uh, anticoagulant therapy so that there is no thrombus formation. Next, in the management of ischemic heart disease. See, we know that myocardial infraction is usually caused by a uh, block in the coronary arteries so an anticoagulation will prevent an anticoagulant therapy will prevent the progression of such clots next it is can be used in peripheral vascular diseases here again it prevents formation of thrombus so these are some important indications of use of anticoagulants inside the body so now we will see what are the different types of anticoagulants that we can use one is oral anticoagulants and the other is intravenous or subcutaneous anticoagulants. So the examples of oral anticoagulants are Kaumarin derivatives, that is vitamin K antagonist. So the examples are warfarin and dicumarol. 
so as the name suggests it they are vitamin k antagonists so what does vitamin k have to do with the clotting see our clotting factors 2 7 9 and 10 as well as protein c and protein s are vitamin k dependent factors see which are the vitamin k dependent factors 2 7 9 10 and protein c and protein s so these factors need vitamin k and only then they can act so if we give vitamin k antagonist what will happen these clotting factors cannot function thus clotting will not occur right so the, what is the role of vitamin k in clotting vitamin k is required for the carboxylation of these clotting factors that is 2 7 9 and 10 and that is how vitamin k antagonists act will learn some some more in detail about this mechanism of action of vitamin k antagonist see vitamin k initially exists in a inactive form which is the oxidized form and in order it to be active it has to be reduced okay now this is done by an enzyme called this v cor c1 so what warfarin does is it inhibits this enzyme so what will happen vitamin k cannot be converted to an active form and thus vitamin k cannot act so what is the mechanism of action of warfarin it inhibits this we 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 c1 enzyme that converts the inactive vitamin k to active vitamin k okay and uh, what about dicumaron see this vitamin k has to act on vitamin k receptors right what dicumaron does is dicumaron binds with these vitamin k receptors so that when vitamin k comes it cannot it cannot exert its action okay so what are the two two actions of warfarin this uh, two actions of these uh, coumarin derivatives warfarin will inhibit vcor c1 and dicumarol will uh, combine with the vitamin k receptors right so these are the oral anticoagulants next we will see about the intravenous or the subcutaneous anticoagulants the famous one is heparin so what how much can heparin increase our bleeding time or clotting time see intravenous heparin can increase clotting time from a normal 6 minutes to around 30 minutes so that is the range of heparin and the mechanism of action is it facilitates the effect of antithrombin 3 and along with antithrombin 3 it inactivates thrombin factor 10 as well as factor 9 okay there are two types of heparin that is one is low molecular weight heparin and other is high molecular weight heparin so what's the difference see low molecular weight heparin has got a longer half life and they can produce a more predictable anticoagulant response so that is why we use low molecular weight heparin more nowadays so what are the advantages of low molecular weight heparin heparin it has got longer half life and it has a more predictable anticoagulant response okay Now the next important uh, intravenous anticoagulant is hirudin. Now hirudin is actually a natural anticoagulant and they are produced by the salivary glands of leech, especially the medicinal leech. Okay. And the mechanism of action is that is a specific inhibitor of thrombin. It inhibits thrombin in order to prevent coagulation. And uh, what is the role of hirudin? See they are usually used you mainly used when the patients who are on heparin when they develop heparin induced thrombocytopenia okay so in patients who have heparin induced thrombocytopenia we give hirudin okay so to summarize we've learned that anticoagulants can be endogenous as well as exogenous endogenous means which is produced inside the body and uh, the three examples are heparin antithrombin 3 and protein c now exogenous means which is produced outside the body and they can be oral as well as intravenous oral examples are coumarin derivatives and we said how uh, the coumarin derivatives that is vitamin k antagonists such as warfarin and dicumarol act to uh, decrease clotting and then we also saw about the intravenous anticoagulants which include heparin as well as hirudin so i hope this concept is clear this uh, this question can be asked as a part of an essay question or as a short essay itself I hope the concept is clear. Thank you.